Hello and welcome to our May edition of First Look ETF. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. It is great to have you with us. From ETFs that lead the pack to those breaking the rules. Coming up on today's show, we profile a pair of new actively managed funds that aim to capitalize on industry leaders and the companies that may disrupt them. Plus, Ships Ahoy will take a deep dive into one ETF navigating its way into the global shipping sector. But first, let's shove off with our regular guest, Douglas Jonas, with the New York Stock Exchange. Hi, Douglas. It's good to see you. Stephanie, it's so great to be back. Uh, Good to see you. I hope all's well. Let's uh, start with the latest update on NYSE launch activity for ETFs. Yeah, I'm here live above the floor as usual. And listen, it's a bit of a broken record for me. Regardless of market volatility, the ETF market remains really strong. Last month, 33 brand new ETFs launched, raising 2.7 billion in new assets under management and who's counting we are that's 146 new ETFs entering the US market this year US market is now approaching seven trillion dollars and again amidst really historic market volatility that you know in a lot of cases has been to the downside yeah that is very impressive what other noteworthy trends in the ETF market are you seeing as well Much like the show is mentioning, Active continues to remain the story this year. Over 50% of all launches in the U.S. markets remains Active ETFs, two of the three uh, you're going to talk about on on today's episode. Again, aligning in there. And the New York Stock Exchange proxy model, that's Active ETFs that don't show their their portfolio every single day. Those ETFs continue to grow. Uh, the, The assets under management as well as new ETFs, two more launching this coming month. So lots happening in the Active space. All right. Impressive numbers, Douglas Jonas. Thanks so much for joining us. It's good to see you. Great to see you as well. All right. Before we move on, a quick reminder that we simulcast First Look ETF on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music and other major podcasting platforms. So be sure to check us out there. Global supply chains were disrupted by covid related issues, commodity shortages and labor supply challenges. Well, now, as those bumps get sorted out, the shipping industry is one sector investors are keeping a close eye on. We are now seeing an uptick in global demand and pricing power for the industry. And joining us to discuss a new ETF targeting the global shipping sector is Frank Holmes, CEO and Chief Investment Officer of U.S. Global Investors. Hi, Frank. It's good to see you. Love the hat. It's great to be with you, and I'll make sure we send you a hat. (laughs) Yes, please do. (laughs) All right. After years of boom and bust cycles, it seems like the shipping industry is finally getting pricing power and a rebound in global demand. Before we talk about your newly launched U.S. Global Sea to Sky Cargo ETF, give us a quick summary of the latest developments in the shipping industry. Well, the the creation of Sea was based on similar to the creation of Jets ETF, which is an incredibly liquid uh, ETF that captures global airlines. And that knowledge we garnered from jets all of a sudden went into the creation of Sea to Sky. Uh, because what we noticed during COVID was this, the busiest airport in the world was Anchorage because it was moving all this cargo. And what's happened over the past few years with the United Nations climate change initiatives, they shrunk the number of boats to be able to carry cargo. And then we get COVID and COVID comes out of it. And so you now have this incredible binge demand for for products. And and that has led itself to all of a sudden we have supply constraints. And any time right now we have a shutdown in China, it just picks up even greater. So in our analysis is that we're in a secular bull market for the for the sea ships, all the big ships and cargo airlines. Uh, we have noticed for our other businesses where the cost of moving equipment has gone through the roof, like tenfold for the airlines. It's an inflationary hedge, and part of our inflation is the shipment of goods. So you, you talked about C, and I want to make sure our viewers are clear on that. You have your new ETF. The ticker symbol is SEA, also C, as you mentioned, targeting, of course, the global shipping sector. Tell us a little bit more about how the fund is different from other transportation-focused funds and what are some of its top holdings? Well, because it's focused on cargo and what our math, our regressional quantum, quantum mental approach showed, 70% shipping, 30% cargo. And what's really fascinating to me is all the major airlines are now coming out and converting their old airplanes into cargo because there's so much pricing power and demand around the world. 
so I, I would share with you, it's a quantum mental approach. Uh, there's nowhere you can buy all these uh, ships for 60 basis points that are based in South Korea, Taiwan, uh, Germany, uh, Danish. Uh, so it truly has a global imprint <clears throat> to it and it recalibrates every quarter. Uh, so, so coming back on the thought processes, it's important that, we're, we're, that people recognize they have pricing power. They're the dictators of the price. There's big demand, limited supply, and it'll take three to five years before it resolves itself. And it's actually an inflationary hedge investment. Yeah, of course, everyone looking for those inflationary hedges. How would C be used inside an overall investment portfolio? How do you see that being used? It's a component of transportation, uh, but I would turn around and have a greater weighting in it uh, than what you would have with trucks and trains, uh, which dominate. So when you look at global shipping, 80% of all products around the world are moved by ships. So it's fascinating to me to see that, that if you have this boom in global spending uh, and you have less ships, this basically says 70% shipping and 30% cargo airlines. So the U.S. dominates cargo airplane businesses, whereas in Asia and in Europe, they dominate shipping. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Frank Holmes, thank you so much for joining us and sharing more about your new ETF C, ticker symbol SEA. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to share our story. Advancements like self-driving cars, gene therapy, and the metaverse are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to shifts in how we do business and our everyday lives. The big question is, which companies will be the beneficiaries of all these big changes ahead? The New Burger Berman Disruptors ETF, ticker symbol NBDS, invests in companies it deems to be the next generation of industry disruptors. And here to talk with us about the fund strategy is Jason Tauber, a portfolio manager at Newberger Berman. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. Hello. All right. So there are many flavors, so to speak, of disruption. For example, there are new products and services, new markets and new processes for getting things done. Help us understand the differences between these various types of disruptions and how they compare. Sure. So when we think about uh, disruption, we think about the innovations that are really going to drive society forward. So real transformative advancements that will benefit everyone. And one way that this product is differentiated from others is we don't just look at kind of the, the tech and health healthcare, kind of the R&D driven innovations. We're also looking at new business processes, like historically, the strategy has invested in railroads because precision railroads kind of redid the way that people think about running a, a railroad. Or we've historically invested in energy drinks when those were kind of new and novel, so an entirely new market. But what's important to the strategy is that we really focus on the strategic position of companies and so what we end up coming back to is within the tech and healthcare landscape, this intellectual property, this R&D driven innovation, this, uh, these industry trade secrets that really protect your business and put it in a strong strategic position results in the fact that the, the strategy does have a lot of exposure to tech and healthcare, because frankly, that is where a lot of the innovation is. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, your Disruptors ETF, that ticker symbol NBDS, it is among your latest ETF additions, as we know. Tell us a little bit more about the strategy. Let's take a deeper dive into that, as well as some of its holdings. Right, so the first thing to know is that that Newberger is very deep into thematic, right? We have, we have over $18 billion invested in different thematic strategies globally. Um, this strategy, Disruptors, has actually been running for about seven or eight years now. Historically, it's only been accessible in private separate accounts, but we're excited to bring this to the masses, so to speak, by introducing this, this ETF format. Uh, and then it's also important to know that we're bringing an institutional discipline to investing in disruption. We've got an enormous research department. We're focused very much on using data science and all the resources we can to kind of bring this discipline to investing in disruption. Okay, so in closing then, how can a fund like NBDS be used by investors and financial professionals inside a diversified portfolio? So Disruptors is a great complement to a core strategy, particularly if that core strategy leans too much in the large cap direction or the value direction, because this is an all cap, so small, mid and large cap. Um, and it's, it's frankly an aggressive growth strategy. So it's a good complement to, to a more core strategy 
to help kind of protect your overall asset allocation as you look off into what's coming next in the future. Jason Tauber, thank you so much for sharing more about your Disruptor ETF. Thank you. ETFs tied to industry sectors is one of the biggest ETF categories by both assets and sheer numbers of funds. Interest in sector investing remains very high. Well, a new fund from Fairlead Strategies has a unique multi-sector approach to its investment strategy. And here to discuss ticker symbol TAC is Katie Stockton, the founder and managing partner at the firm. Hi, Katie. It is great to have you with us. Hi, Stephanie. Good to be with you today. Okay, so the Fair Lead Tactical Sector ETF, ticker symbol TAC, is quite different compared to other industry sector funds. Tell us about TAC's unique strategy and what makes it stand out. Well, there's a couple things that differentiate TAC, um, but I'd say first and foremost, it's the part that is the asset allocation piece. So not only does TAC invest in sectors, but it also has the ability to move into what we consider to be risk off categories, including short term and long term treasury bonds and also gold. So it has really this nice conservative approach to the U.S. equity market where we're trying to leverage sector leadership by using technical analysis, which is the analysis of price trends and momentum. We're trying to find those winning sectors and making sure that we have good exposure to those. But then at times, and and it seems like we might be in one of those times, the market does dictate some movement away from U.S. equities, and TAC will do that for you. Yeah, let's dive into that a little deeper, because the equity market, as we all know now, has entered into a corrective phase. How do you anticipate TAC will navigate a more challenging market environment? What kind of role does an ETF like TAC play inside a diversified portfolio? So I know that's a lot to throw at you, but break it down for us. Yeah, you know, in and of itself, TAC is diversified because it, it diversifies amongst the sectors and then also has that inherent risk off category to it when the market dictates it. So it really is a great core long term holding. It can be a piece of a portfolio or it can be a whole portfolio if somebody likes to kind of trade around other names and it creates a great core long term U.S. equity exposure. Importantly, we're trying to identify sector momentum and we treat the ETF like it has buckets. Each of these buckets is equal weighted. So when we have a sector exposure, which is done via ETFs, the sector exposure will be equal weighted about 12 and a half percent of the fund. So what happens with that is, let's say the energy sector were outperforming like it is right now, then we'll have a bigger exposure to that energy sector than the S&P 500 will. So we'll have more exposure to the leading sectors of the market than, than at times the S&P 500 will itself. And because of that, we're trying to build on the returns of the S&P 500, but also having that an eye towards risk by managing through big downdrafts and even trading range environments by having some piece of the fund in those risk off categories. And in that way, we are attempting to minimize drawdowns and the drawdowns can really be killers, especially in this kind of environment, which we've seen technology for one underperform for months. Before we go, uh, what sectors right now? You mentioned energy. What are some of the sectors you're looking at right now? Right now, TAC is invested, actually half of TAC is exposed to short-term treasuries, long-term treasuries, and gold. So it's pretty risk off at this time. The sector exposure is spread across four different sectors right now, and they lean more defensive, meaning consumer staples, utilities, real estate, things that are less cyclical. And then, of course, there's that energy piece because energy has the momentum. So it has an eye towards long term momentum, and it doesn't rebalance all that often. It's a monthly rebalance, and that's by design because that helps eliminate the noise of the marketplace and really make sure that it identifies important trend shifts and can be a long-term strategy with that in mind. All right, Katie Stockton, thank you so much for sharing more about TAC with us. And thanks for joining us here on First Look ETF. Thank you. And that does it for today's episode of First Look ETF. How did you enjoy the program? Well, let us know in the comments section below and feel free to hit that like button as well. A big thanks to all of our guests, along with Douglas Jonas from the New York Stock Exchange. Be sure to check out homeofetfs.com to learn more. Also, don't forget to pick up the podcast version of First Look ETF. It is available at iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, and other major podcasting platforms. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.